Hey guys, this is Mommy Beluga Investing. Hi there, back again with me, Rati and Mommy Beluga Investing. In this video, I'm going to give an update on iFast with stock symbol AIY. Okay, I have discussed the company's profile on my previous video around eight months ago. So I would advise you to visit that video for a lengthier discussion on the company's profile. Uh, right now, my quick take after going through IFAS latest numbers. First, since my last video, IFAS moved to acquire UK based BFC Bank. We'll further follow up. Yeah, profitability dropped for the last three quarters. That it seems to halt halt its growth streak growth streak over the last two years. The market seems to punish IFAS valuation, which the price getting more interesting. However, the share price is still not low enough that makes me considering to make a position in the company just yet. Okay, how did I come up with that conclusion? Keep watching this video till the end. You can also access this channel in podcast version through Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and other podcast platforms. Alright, before getting into the data, I read out the disclaimer first. Disclaimer, this is an amateur video. I started this channel to record my journey, learning and practicing investing from scratch. Uh, over the time, I made some changes with the intention to keep improving this channel. Still, this video shouldn't replace any financial advice and it is a suggestion to take position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision. But if you do your own research, I hope this video and this channel could be useful somehow. Send in your comment and get input in the comment section down below. Now let's start with a quick, very quick background of the company. From reading its 2020 annual report, I can see that IFAS is a one-stop wealth management solution fintech company. It provides service to uh, financial advisory companies, financial institutions, banks, internet companies, wealth advisor and retail investors. According to the chairman's message in its 2020 annual report, IFAS revenue is based on, quote, well diversified. In this chart, we can see that a company has three revenue sources classifications and almost half of the net revenue comes from trailer fee. I tried to read up uh, on trailer fee. From my understanding, it is the fee that IFAS obtained from mutual fund manager for selling fund to investors. This fee is recurring because IFAS will continuously receive trailer fee as long as the investor owns the fund. Okay, that's a bit about the IFAS background. Now let's take a look at the company's performance. Start from its EPS history. So here I plotted IFAS earning per share for the last 10 years since 2012. However, in this video, instead of plotting the annual EPS, here I plot the annualized quarterly EPS. This way I can describe the company's performance in more details as when I made this video. As usual, I also added green dash line to indicate the zero level. When earning below this line indicates a company had reported a loss for that period. So at a glance, we can see on our screen yeah, that IFAS recorded all time high EPS in the first quarter of 2021. The earning at the subsequent quarter in 2021 is not as high as the first quarter. IFAS quarterly earning drop is not unusual. It happened before. There were the first quarter of 2015, 2016 and the second quarter of 2019. So it's not that rare. On all, all in all, yeah, it doesn't seem to be too worrying, at least for me. Okay, uh, ne next, let's take a look at IFAS cash position and short term liability. Okay, so here I plotted IFAS cash position at the end of the year as the purple bar chart and superimposed with its quarterly EPS as the red line. For that, IFAS cash position at the end of 2021 looks it plotted as first quarter of 2022. IFAS a pile of yeah, 
increase their IFAS pile of cash have been increasing for the last three years, but has not been as high as the level at the end of 2018 or beginning of 2019. To figure out how uh, this cash position compared to the company's health, I'll add another layer of information that is the current liability. Right here, I plot uh, IFAS current liability at the end of the year in grey bar. Current liability reached its peak at the end of 2020 or beginning of 2021. By the end of 2021 or beginning of 2022, the gap in IFAS cash and current liability had decreased. In my interpretation, this is a good sign. Now, part of uh, IFAS expansion, first, IFAS had acquired a UK, yeah, a UK-based bank for a total cost of 14 million uh, pound, yeah, pound sterling, the equivalent uh, to about 72 million of Singapore dollar. Now the transaction is rather long-winded but kind of interesting to digest. I'll try to describe it here as simple, simple as possible based on my understanding. So what happened was that IFAS took control of BFC via a special purpose company called Eagles Pick Holdings Limited or in short EPHL. Yeah, this company, EPHL uh, itself, was created in November 2020 for the purpose of bidding for BFC, the bank. IFAS was then, uh, yeah, IFAS then bought 85% of EPHL share for 40 million pounds. The 40 million pounds that EPHL received from IFAS was then used as following. The first one was that 22.5 million was used to buy the company, the bank, BFC. And then about 15 million was deposited to BFC. And the rest were used for the transaction related fee. This transaction is just recently completed on the 17th of January 2022. And the impact on IFAS cash and liability position hasn't been reflected here yet. As the making of this video, IFAS first quarter of 2022 result, the result for, for the first quarter of 2022, hasn't been released yet. But I suspect the cash position will drop again. All right, I'm going to skip through the whole dividend part since there's not that much update since my last analysis eight months ago on the dividend side. The only change is uh, that instead of around 0.3 dividend yield, the current dividend yield is around 0.5, depending on the yeah, at the price yeah. Uh, according to the, my standard, both yeah, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 is still rather low for dividend yield. Now let's look at the market valuation and its reasonable price. Yeah, to see IFAS market valuation here, I plotted four layers of information. They are, the first one is the price of the company, which represents market valuation of the company. The second layer of information is the 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. The third layer of information is the 15 times earning multiply. And then the fourth layer of information is the 20 times earning multiply. All right, let's look at the screen now. Yeah, we can see that there was a market euphoria since early 2020 till mid 2021. This may be spurred by IFAS earnings growth, as we can see that IFAS earnings were in a growing phase at that time, but the market seemed to respond pretty aggressively. 
When the earnings seems to be flattened out, market seems to punish IFAS valuation severely. IFAS share price have dropped more than 40% for from its all-time high since mid 2021. Will be interesting to see who are selling and whether the sell-off related to acquisition of BFC Bank. All right, through some diggings, we could see that there were a couple of treasury shares uh, sales during that period. The first one was 30th of April 2021. Uh, 200, around 234,000 share for about 1.5 million Singapore dollar. That would be about around 6.71 uh, dollar per share in 30th of April 2021. And then the next one was on uh, 4th of May 2021, around 5,700 share for uh, the amount of 36,000, around 36,000 dollars Singapore dollars. So that was about uh, $6.1 dollar per share. For the updated reasonable price based on its uh, latest earning, I would place uh, IFAST reasonable price to be around $2 per share, which at its 20 times earning per share. I still see that the company is still growing, so I have a trust in the company's ability of making profit. It's just that the currently the market seems to be pretty harsh with IFAST after the hype in late uh, 2020 to mid 2021. Uh, in terms of its current price, as of 14th of April 2022, when I prepare this video, IFAST stock price is at $5.83 per share. A quick flashback, around eight months ago, the price was $8.31 per share. Back then, my reasonable price was the same. $2 per share. Uh, with regard to its price, my comment is still the same though. The company seems to be promising, but the price is still beyond my comfort zone. Though it's uh, rather closer to my comfortable price now. All right, now we'll wrap up. Since my last video, IFAS moved to acquire UK-based BFC Bank will worth further follow-up. Profitability drop for the last three quarters that it seems to halt its growth streak streak over the last two years. The yeah. And then the market seems to punish IFAS valua valuation, which the price getting more interesting. However, yeah, the share price is still not low enough for me at least to make me considering to make a position in IFAS just yet. So I'll keep this company in view, waiting for the price and profitability to be more ideal for me. The dividend is too low for me though, so I just count on the company's growth if I ever decide to invest in iFast. If you watched my previous video on my family investing journey and strategy, 6% investment yield per annum on average is my target, which will sort of guarantee me to retire in around 6 years from now. All right, if you find this content to be informative or interesting, please consider the support by clicking the subscribe button. I also appreciate your input to improve this channel through the comment section. You can also access this channel uh, through podcast version in Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast platform. The channel is the same, Mami Baluga Investing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in my next video.